The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom Season 1, Episode 2 is now out. We're going to take a look at each of the storylines, give you a couple of takeaways, pick a favorite animal, and we want to hear from you as well. Welcome back to Eye to Eye, Disney Through Our Eyes. My name is Kyle, and this is our Disney Variety Channel where we cover anything and everything Disney. If you haven't already, I hope that you'll consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any of the content that we put out for you. With episode two out, we're finally getting a real closer look at what the series, The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom, is really gonna look like going forward throughout season one. And I gotta admit, it's fun, it's entertaining, and it's keeping me interested because it's showing us a side of the Disney parks that we never get to see. As you can imagine with this episode, we get a brand new set of animals and storylines to take a look at, which each have their own amazing stories and unique perspectives on life in Disney's Animal Kingdom and beyond. Just like in episode one, there are four unique storylines for us to cover, so we're gonna go look at those right now. Storyline number one, Gino the Western Lowland Gorilla. Birthday parties are always fun, especially when it includes a troop of gorillas. Gino, the birthday boy and silverback of this family group, is having a big day celebrating. But with each passing celebration, it means that Gino's age is starting to show. It also means that things like a common cold being passed among the troop affects him just a little bit more than the others. The keeper staff and vet staff take quick action to treat his illness and make accommodations to make the old man's recovery a little bit easier. Storyline number two, Darby the Spotted Eagle Ray. Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom meets Magic of Disney's Epcot. We take a special trip to the Seas Pavilion to follow the story of a pregnant spotted eagle ray named Darby. The narrative actually switches gears halfway through when the baby ray decides to come out just a little bit early. The little boy is having some trouble adjusting to life away from mom and not eating well, thus not allowing it to maintain its weight. Keepers have to tube feed the baby to help it regain this weight so it can eventually return to the big habitat. I actually learned a lot during this segment since I have very little aquatic animal experience. Storyline number three, Kenzie the African Lion. Everyone thinks the big male lions are in charge. Not the case at Disney's Animal Kingdom where Kenzie the Lioness rules the Pride Lands. Keeper staff notice a lump on the back of her leg and of course fear the worst. She is rushed into sedation so they can explore the anomaly. If you ever wanted to see what it's like to be with a sedated yet big and dangerous animal, here is your chance. Thankfully, it's just a case of tendonitis which can be treated with a little physical therapy. Kenzie is eventually reunited with her family with a clean bill of health. Storyline number four, Winged Encounters. One of the hidden gems of Animal Kingdom is the macaw flights that take place at various times throughout the park. Guests marvel at these free-flying creatures, but little is known about what actually has to go in to get them to this point. We get to see Santiago and Emmett, two different species of macaw with two different stories in their training process. Behind the scenes, a small but crucial amount of steps are taken to teach these birds where and when to fly and also how to return home. It's also a good example of animals having unique personalities requiring Santiago to have a little bit more training and allowing Emmett to graduate to the big leagues. So now let's go into each of my takeaways from this episode and we'll start with takeaway number one, which has to do with the actual title of the series as a whole. Here I thought that we were only gonna be staying in Disney's Animal Kingdom the entire time. But even I was stupid for a minute and forgot that they have a whole other set of animals in a different park altogether. We actually get to go to Epcot, to the Living Seas, and check, take a look at all of those animals that they have over there. And obviously the one storyline with the ray that they had there was a nice addition and, and something that I don't think a lot of people were expecting out of the zoo. We think of lions and tigers and bears and giraffes and elephants and all that kind of stuff. But the fact that Disney is going out of their way to show you stories about animals that you necessarily wouldn't think of, I love, and I love that they're incorporating not just the true Animal Kingdom park part of this, but the Animal Kingdom of Disney as a whole within all of their property. Takeaway number two for me has to do with transporting a dangerous animal that's been under sedation. So again, I have some zoo experience and have been part of things similar to this, and I think this is a part of the zoo field that a lot of people want to know more about or are interested in because the idea of having a big old animal like a gorilla or a lion under sedation, 
that just seems very intricate and interesting and in how it actually happens. And people, I think, forget that this is still a dangerous animal and extreme precautions and measures have to be taken place to make sure not only for the safety of the animal, but of course, for the safety of the animal care staff as a whole. So if you really wanted a look inside to see what those type of situations are like, this is the episode for you because you get not just one, but two with the lion and the gorilla segments. And I think if you really are interested in that, this is what you need to watch. Takeaway number three for me is going to be Disney's commitment to show you the stories that you don't necessarily think that you wanted to know about. And I'm referring obviously to the story of the Eagle Ray and the parrots at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Again, as I said in my first takeaway, I believe that, you know, everyone thinks of these certain animals about the zoo and it's not, you know, it sometimes tends to forget about you know, birds and reptiles and even like smaller things like eagle rays. The fact that Disney is going out of its way to, to give you what you expected, the lions, the gorillas, the elephants, but also trying their best to make sure you see these stories with the parrots, the eagles, last time even popcorn, the chicken. To me, the, the takeaway for me is that Disney really is gonna do their best to make this interesting for you on a level that you weren't anticipating. And that's why this episode for me was a big winner and has me further excited for what's coming in the future in this series. Now it's time for me to pick my favorite animal storyline from episode two. And I think I'm gonna go with a wild card again here because it was the biggest surprise for me. I've talked a lot about a lot already, and that's the Eagle Ray, the baby and Darby, the mom situation there, because that was just something we really weren't thinking we were gonna get to see, A, because we thought this was all about just Animal Kingdom and not including Epcot, but also I didn't really see any advertisement about the Rays or anything like that in promos and trailers and things like that. At least I didn't notice. But I love learning a little bit more about something that even I, as somebody with animal uh, experience in that profession, haven't got to learn a lot about as well. So I actually took something away from this. So for that reason, my favorite storyline of the animals was the Eagle Rays. Now this is where you come in. I want to hear from you in the comments section below. What were your takeaways from this episode if you have watched it? Also, what was your favorite animal? I think we all can agree that that little Eagle Ray was the cutest thing ever, but I'm sure that you probably have a few opinions that are different from mine. And as always, remember that I do have some zoo experience and I don't have all the answers and I probably won't ever have all the answers, but I do have some perspectives that I could share with you. So if you saw something in this episode that you're curious about, that makes sense, feel free to ask a question below and I'd be happy to try to answer that for you. Now, if you'd like some more opportunities to view some content related to this series or other Animal Kingdom videos from our channel, we're gonna have some links for you in the description below and you can also click on the title cards above you if you'd like to check out some of those options. That is all I have for you on this edition of I2I, but until we assemble again, may the force be with you and I'll see you real soon.